Welcome back. We're going to continue reading about John the Baptist's birth story. We're on October 20th of the Daily Bible in chronological order. And I'm starting uh, with Luke chapter 1, verses 26 through 38. Mary is told of the conception. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High God. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be barren is in her sixth month, for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. The next section is Mary goes to visit her cousin Elizabeth. This is Luke chapter 1, verses 39 through 45. It's a, it's a city in Judah. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that what the Lord has said to her will be accomplished. Mary praises God. Luke chapter 1 verses 46 through 56. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever even as he said to our fathers. And Mary stayed with Elizabeth for about three months and then returned home. Luke chapter 1, verses 57 through 66, and John the Baptist is born. When it was time for Elizabeth to have her baby, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord has shown her great mercy. And they shared her joy. On the eighth day, they came to circumcise the child and were going to name him after his father, Zechariah. 
But his mother spoke up and said, No, he's to be called John. They said to her, There's no one among your relatives who has that name. Then they made signs to his father to find out what he would like to name the child. He asked for a writing tablet, and to everyone's astonishment, he wrote, His name is John. Immediately his mouth was opened and his tongue was loosed, and he began to speak, praising God. The neighbors were all filled with awe, and throughout the hill country of Judea, people were talking about these things. Everyone who heard this wondered about it, saying, What then is this child going to be? For the Lord's hand was with him. Luke chapter 1, verses 67 through 80. Zechariah prophesies. His father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Spirit and prophesied, Praise be to the Lord God of Israel, because he has come and redeemed his people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. As he said through the holy prophets long ago, Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath he swore to our father Abraham to rescue us from the hand of our enemies and to enable us to serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all our days. And you, my child, will be called a prophet of the Most High, for you will go on before the Lord to prepare the way for him to give his people the knowledge of salvation through the forgiveness of their sins because of the tender mercy of our God by which the rising sun will come to us from heaven to shine on those living in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the path of peace. And the child grew and became strong in spirit And he lived in the desert until he appeared publicly to Israel. Let's let's stop here now and uh, let's reflect on what we've just read. There's kind of two parts to this. I mean, the first part, right, is uh, Mary is visited by the angel. And if you haven't seen that, you can actually watch these clips uh, in the Jesus film. I'll post a link online where you can go and, and see um, this story unfolding of oh Mary at least they skip over all the parts of uh, Zachariah and John the Baptist being born and whatnot. Um, but think about this. I mean, here's Mary. She's probably only about what 14, 15 years old, and this angel just suddenly appears to her, and and that's got to be a pretty scary thing. And. Uh, Mary, it says, Mary was greatly troubled. Um, Even though he said, greetings, you who are highly favored, the the Lord is with you. She was was kind of freaked out. Uh, But so the angel says, don't be afraid, Mary. Now, of course, what the angel says isn't easy news either. I mean, he's basically saying you're going to get pregnant. And, you know, she's asking, well, what do you mean I'm going to get pregnant? I... I didn't sleep with anybody, right? Um, and then he says, well, the Holy Spirit's going to come upon you. Now, I know some other people out there think, well, I have thoughts that, well, maybe, okay, so this can't be true because God's not flesh and blood and he's not going to go in and, and lie with Mary and have a son that way. That's That's not the holy God that we know. But, I think they're thinking about it the wrong way. It doesn't. It doesn't say that 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 God slept with Mary. You know, we're talking about God here, God who created the the universe, right? The God who created all the plants and the trees and the stars and everything else. God who created the mountains and the oceans. God who created all people, even Adam and Eve and, and everyone else since. What small thing is it to implant one fertilized egg in? A young girl named Mary. Now, that, in my opinion, is a small thing. The big thing is that he then 
he humbled himself and became a man. And he, uh, you know, he, he gave up his, his huge powers of omniscience. His means knowing everything. He, his omnipresence, which means being everywhere. And his omnipotence, which means having all the power and strength to crush the universe with a word if he so wished. Uh, but he set all that aside and basically humbled himself to, and entered into uh, Mary's womb as a baby. Okay, so that's basically what, he's, what the angel is saying here, is the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And so the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And now, this, so this is why the virgin birth is so important, because we needed to know, we needed to understand that this, this Jesus, this baby, is not the son of Joseph. Jesus wasn't created because Joseph wanted a baby or something. Um, we had to know that there's no other source for this baby. There's no father. And that's important because, we, you know, it, we have to know that this baby came from God himself. God himself entered into Mary's womb, and his name was Jesus. So that's, that's why that's so important. And then the rest of the story where uh, Mary then goes to visit Elizabeth is just so sweet, where suddenly Elizabeth is filled with the Holy Spirit. Now you got to remember, this is not a common thing. To be filled with the Holy Spirit is not an everyday thing for them. For us, who live after uh, Christ's crucifixion, uh, receiving the Holy Spirit is something that, that, that all Christians should experience. Uh, not all do, but, but it's something that is fairly common for us. Uh, in these days, it wasn't. And Elizabeth immediately recognized that Mary was carrying the Savior. And, uh, and they, they go back and forth here, kind of praising each other. And Mary, obviously filled with the Holy Spirit, says things beyond her years. And uh, in, in her sort of... Uh, it's like a song or something, I guess, in her praises to God. Uh, and then when, when John the Baptist was born, I mean, how cool was that? That uh, the neighbors did, were like, what do you want to name him John for? That, what's the point of that? Like, you don't have any relatives named John. Um, you know, but then, of course, Zechariah confirms, yes, his name is John. And, and then he's able to speak again. And then all the neighbors are just totally like, oh, you know, wow. And they're telling each other about this incredible child. And then, of course, um, it's interesting. It says the child grew up and became strong in spirit. And he lived in the desert until he appeared publicly in Israel. Uh, wow. I, this, uh, that's kind of a, a different lifestyle. Um, obviously, if he was filled with the spirit and he went to go live in the desert, that's exactly what God told him to do. And uh, I, I wonder what it was like for him being in the desert with God. I wonder how, I mean, we, we know that he, he ate locusts and honey. It says that later. Um, but, you know, God provided for him, even in a place where uh, he, he didn't farm. And uh, it, it's not an obvious place where it, it's easy to survive. But God, God took care of him. Okay, that's it for today. Tomorrow we're going to talk about uh, Joseph's angle and how he finds out about Mary's conception.